So oh, we're going to say now live. We're streaming. Go, Chris. Hello, and welcome to the University of North Carolina Greensboro's Financial Aid Office, Money Matters. My name is Dr. Chris Ratliff, and we're joined tonight by Deborah Tollefson, uh, the Director of Financial Aid, our Associate Director, John Lucas, and behind the scenes, we have Deborah Slade and Matthew Reese. We would like to spend the next hour addressing questions or concerns about financial aid and how that affects your student bill here at the university. Uh, let's get started. Now you've received numerous important emails from the university and just recently you should have received one from our cashier's office regarding your bill for fall. So that's where we'll get started tonight. Can, Deborah, can you explain a little bit about the bill and the financial aid cost of attendance? Yeah, I was going to jump right in on that. Thank you, Chris. Um, there's always a lot of confusion uh, initially about the estimated cost of attendance that we use uh, in the financial aid office to determine need and the actual bill, what you're going to be charged for. The estimated cost of attendance is just what it sounds like. It is an estimate of what it will cost um, for a, a, reasonable, a reasonable cost to attend the university for the academic year, which is fall and spring. Um, there are certainly students that spend more than our estimated costs, and there are students who live on less than our estimated costs. But there are a number of categories uh, that you'll see in that even if you live off campus, we're going to es estimate things like your room and board, how much you're going to spend on room and board, uh, transportation, personal and miscellaneous expenses, as well as tuition and fees and books and supplies, um, and those more direct costs. So that estimated cost of attendance, we take that and we subtract from that what the federal government comes up with as your expected family contribution. That gives us need and that's used as part of the calculation to determine what kind of aid and how much, of aid, how much aid we can provide to you. So the bill on the other hand, which is what we're really here to talk about tonight, the bill is one semester at a time. You don't get billed for the whole year. You only get billed for one semester at a time. So the, the email you got from cashiers today was about your fall 2020 bill, okay? It's gonna have tuition and fees based on the courses that you are currently registered in. So if you're only in part-time hours and you plan to be in a full-time student, your charges are gonna go up when you add classes because fee assessment is based on your actual enrollment. If you're living on campus, you will see housing and meal plan charges. If you're not living on campus, you're not going to see those. Books and supplies, those you purchase out of pocket, you can purchase those at the bookstore or, or uh, through other sources. Um, things like our personal and miscellaneous expenses and transportation, you're never going to get a bill for those things. Those are just our estimates of what we think you're going to spend and the kind of money you might need um, throughout the semester. So remember that bill is your direct cost for fall semester. You'll get another bill in the spring that should be pretty similar. If you add things like a parking permit, uh, health insurance, if you, if you have health insurance and you haven't waived it, waive the university health insurance yet, you need to make sure you do that. If you just waived it yesterday, it's probably going to take five to 10 days for that charge to come off of your account. And the other thing to think about with your bill that you're getting today is that's a snapshot in time. All right. So tomorrow, it may not be correct anymore. So after, after that initial bill, you need to be looking in the student account center. Go ahead and log in and genie with your username and password. Make sure you're going into that secure area and selecting the student account center. And then you will see your actual charges on there. Like if you add a uh, bookstore box or something like that that goes on later, that's going to increase your charges. Um, you'll see your estimated financial aid. Um, one of the things about the bill that really confuses people, if you have more financial aid than your charges, you're going to see a negative balance. That doesn't mean you owe money. That means that when your financial aid is all finally applied to your student account, you'll actually get a refund. Cashier's office, once classes start, 
actually just a few days before classes start, will start the refunding process and they'll go through and sweep through those accounts and they will create a refund for any of those balances that look at like a negative, those negative numbers that you see. Um, that's the amount you're gonna get in a refund, but you won't get that until a day or so before classes start. So I've, I've already added a lot in there. I'm gonna stop and let... Um... Mr. Lucas, how do you accept this financial aid? Great point, Chris. So generally um, in financial aid, uh, we will award students scholarships, grants, and, and loans. Um, some things are accepted automatically in the system, but many things have to be accepted by the student. For instance, a student loan. Um, you can go into UNC Genie, go to the financial aid tab, and look at your award and you at that point as a student you can decide for your student loan whether or not you want to decline the loan if you don't think you need it whether or not you want to accept the full amount of the loan or even a smaller amount so we will always award your student loans up to the maximum allowed by the government but it is up to the student to decide how much of that do you need we do always encourage people to um, borrow as little as you need one other very important thing about the student loans that I always want to make sure people are aware of, whether you, uh, if you decline a loan or if you accept a smaller amount but decide later that you need more, you can still get more. Declining a loan right now doesn't mean it's lost to you forever for the whole academic year. If things change later on and you do want to use it, contact our office. We have a simple form for you to fill out to let us know you do want to borrow some of that money that you declined and we can take care of that for you. So don't be afraid to decline a loan um, because you think you might need it later, it will not go away forever. So again, borrow only what you need to make sure that over the course of the next four years that you can keep your total loan debt as low as possible. And where can you see the bill and the financial aid in your, in your account? So that's a good question because, and this is an important distinction too, we would like to make in a session like this in that financial aid and the cashier's office are really two sides of the same coin, but we're not the same office and we don't do all the same things. So when you are logged into UNC Genie, you will see different links to look at your information for each office. So in, in Genie, you can click on the financial aid link to look at your financial aid award, to look at your requirements, to look at things like that. And then for your cashier's office questions regarding your bill and your payments, you would wanna select the student account center. In the student account center, you can see uh, your bill, the one that was generated and sent out today. And as we said earlier, that is a snapshot. So you'd wanna look at your account details to see any recent or new activity for to make sure that you can find out what is your current amount due, or in the case of a negative, negative amount would mean your refund. Um, it's also the place where you would make a payment. So you can enter into the payment plan through the student account center, make a direct payment. Also, you can set up uh, an account for direct deposit so if you do get a refund that can be deposited directly for you and not get a paper check in the mail um, over 80 percent of our students do set up direct deposit and we certainly encourage it it's much easier to have the funds deposited into an account rather than getting a check and then having to make another step by going to the bank but the choice is totally up to you whatever way you want so um, we like to kind of kid around with our colleagues and say the financial aid office gives the money and the cashier's office takes the money but that is really a good way to think about our, our two roles we award the scholarships, the grants, the student loans. That helps pay the bill. They take care of the bill and, and take the payments to make sure that you can pay uh, for your experience. And, and uh, the other confusing thing that can be is, happen sometimes is, is we do award financial aid for the whole year, but you are billed by semester. So sometimes you have to remember that an amount you got for the whole year, you're getting half for the fall and half for the spring, uh, and that will appear on your bill. And when is the bill due for the fall semester? So the payment due date is listed on the bill. Um, and I do uh, have an example of the bill. Uh, the payment due date is July 30th. So that's an important date to remember. Um, and then of course, uh, to be clear, the final deadline to pay the bill uh, is the first day of class. So that is an first day of class is important for both reasons, right? It's the first day classes begin, but it's also the, the deadline of which the bill is due. If you, um, I'm going to add a little bit in here. If you have a scholarship, so you got your bill today and you're thinking, well, but I've got another scholarship that's going to come in and it's going to pay the difference of this. If you will send the financial aid office, you can use our document uploader in Genie and upload a copy of the letter from your donor. Um, 
we'll go ahead and put that out there um, as a resource so the cashier's office knows you have those funds coming. We automatically split those funds between fall and spring, unless we're told otherwise. Uh, if you have an outside scholarship check in your possession, go ahead and send it to the financial aid office. Our address is on our website. And uh, the sooner you can get that check to us, the uh, sooner we can get it posted to your student account. And is the financial aid directly applied to the account or there something, or do they pay me and then I pay the bill? No, financial aid is posted, that's a good question, Chris. Financial aid is posted directly to the student account and any charges that the student has will be subtracted from that. And if there is a balance, that balance will be refunded to the student. So students that are living off campus, for example, will usually get a larger refund because they have uh, expenses like rent and utilities and food to, to pay for that are not direct costs from the university. So they'll get a refund of that money. But financial aid posts everything to the student account and then the cashier's office handles it from there. How does the university notify me of any changes or my bill or that my financial aid is, is ready? How does, how does the university reach out to the student to let them know? Um, there are a number of ways that the university uh, tries to communicate with students. Um, generally, the different offices like financial aid or like the cashier's office uh, will send out emails to students to update them on their status. Uh, your question about um, changes to the bill, uh, there is a monthly billing statement that would be sent out by the cashier's office should there be additional activity on the account. But for a lot of students, you know, uh, they have the bill generated in July, like we're in the period that we're in right now. The financial aid will pay to the bill if the student uh, makes any payments as well for the fall semester. Generally, that's the end of it for the term until uh, November and December when the billing statements for the spring get ready. Um, the other thing to remember is that the information about the student bill is accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the student account center via Genie. The financial aid information is available the same way, 24 hours a day, seven days a week through UNC Genie. So if a student ever has a question um, and wants to look at it, it doesn't matter if the office is closed, that information is available. And then even if there is a question from a student or a parent, uh, and even though the office is not open on the weekends or at night, you still can contact us. You can use our um, chat bot named Minnie to ask questions, to look for information, and she will guide you to different parts of the website with answers to your questions and provide answers, including sometimes video content to help that. Or you can always send an email to our general financial aid email account. It's, it's finaid, F-I-N-A-I-D at uncg.edu. And staff will be answering those questions when we return to the office. So you don't have to even wait and remember to email us or call us Monday morning, send the message in the email of the weekend. We'll get it on Monday and start answering those questions as quickly as we can. So we are we are available even when we're not. And then information in Jeannie is always available. And again, our chat bot, Minnie, um, she never takes a break. She is available all the time. Um, and we do actually know from looking at the data in the chat bot that people do use her, ask her questions at all hours of the day. So we're really happy that she's part of the group because uh, we know that she's making a difference for people. When you have a question, um, someone is there to answer it for you. A big concern right now with our families, our students and their families is being able to afford and pay the bill. So is there a way for us to get more money for financial aid? Or if we do have a bill, let's say for $1,000, are there options to make those payments? Well, there are a couple of different options. Uh, we know everybody is, this is a very challenging year. Uh, no question about that. There's a payment plan that the cashier's office has uh, that will allow you to split it up into five payments. I think that's uh, available until July, July 16th. 16th. Uh, after that, it'll be a four payment plan, uh, later on even a three payment plan. But if you do that right away, it's a five, it's spread it out in five payments. We have parent plus loans, uh, parent loans for undergraduate students. And there's also a process called professional judgment, a request for a professional judgment. If you email us, uh, if you've had tremendous change in your family financial circumstances since the FAFSA was completed, uh, email us and we can send you that, uh, the process uh, that you need to, 
to, to do in order to request a professional judgment. So there are a number of different things that you can do, but, but the best thing is to email us about things like that and we'll send you instructions. Um, oh, I lost my thought. Okay, today um, students received an email from the cashier's office regarding their bills for the fall semester. When is that bill due and how did they pay for that bill? Okay, so I actually have a, a sample bill that I'm gonna show on the screen that we can use to also um, help answer that question. So um, let me share that with the group here. So this is a sample of what the bill would look like. Maybe some folks who are watching this haven't yet seen the bill. Uh, the important information really is here in the blue, in the blue box. These are the charges on a student account and these are the normal charges a student would have based on the registration, tuition and fees um, that are on there. And in this example, looking at the bottom here, a student is living on campus. So there's also a charge for their residence hall. Um, so the total amount of all their charges he's here at the bottom is $10,253.59. Those are the charges for the fall semester. And then next to that in the yellow box is this example this student has some financial aid, has some various scholarships and loans. These are listed on the part. Now the bill is not color coded like this, mind you, but it's listed on the part under anticipated credits. So these are the financial aid funds that are available. And then down here in the bottom right in the red, um, they have taken the total charges, subtracted the financial aid that's available. And this is the bottom line amount that is due. This is what would be due by the July 30th deadline. I'm sorry, the July 30th payment due date. And then this is the amount we were mentioning before. This is the what a student would have to pay. And then how, how would a student pay that? Well, that's kind of a loaded question. There's really two different kinds of answers to that. But the mechanism of payment, a couple of different ways a student can pay a bill. Again, through the Student Account Center, um, you can make a payment. A student or a family can use a credit card, but there is a, a fee to use a credit card. Um, there is also, uh, you can use a web check and pay through your checking account, and there's no fee for that. Um, students can mail in checks to the cashier's office and they do accept in-person payments. So um, those are the mechanisms of which a student would make a payment if they owed any money. Uh, and again, if, the, if this part in red down here was a negative amount due, that would be telling the student that there's more financial aid than there, than there are charges. And that means that that financial aid would be refunded to the student for them to use for other expenses throughout the semester. So buying their books and different supplies or if they're living off campus, paying their landlord, the rent and buying food and things like that. The other question about, you know, how do I pay? Meaning, hey, I have some amount due and I need to know um, what else is out there to help me make this payment. As we mentioned before, the two main sources that people will use to pay this is either using uh, really it's three sources. One is of course, just paying out of pocket, um, using money um, from a savings account or things like that or using a parent plus loan, which is a, a federal loan. It's like a student loan, but it's for parents. So that is a way for uh, people to have additional funds to help pay the bill. Or as we said before, using the payment plan, which would take that uh, amount due, divide it into five payments. There's a $35 fee to use a payment plan, but instead of making one lump sum payment all at one time, you can break that down into five payments, which makes it just a little bit uh, more easy to handle on our budgets by having uh, five payments rather than one large one. One of the benefit of using the payment plan um, through uh, the Student Account Center is that should there be an additional uh, scholarship added to an account, then the remaining payments would be reduced automatically. Or if you decided to make have another charge added to your account, say the bill, you didn't have a, a parking permit added, you chose to do that later, then the rest of the payments would be adjusted upwards to account for that new charge. So it's very low maintenance because you don't have to then decide I want to pay more or less because of those changes. It figures it out for you automatically. So it's really, really convenient. And, and if I didn't can, mention this yes. before, uh, sorry, Chris, is that by being in the payment plan, you're not making all the payments by the due date, but being in the payment plan satisfies the obligation to pay. And if students' courses would not be canceled at the deadline, even though they've not yet made all the payments. So it's really convenient for that case. And you can view this in your UNC Genie account. Correct. By going into the Student Account Center, and this is an example before, we'll say it again, just to make sure people are clear. Um, this example of, of, of the bill is a snapshot that was taken 
by the cashier's office and any any activity that happened that happens today going forward is not represented in this um, piece of paper. It's like getting a bill in the mail, right? If you've made other payments, then it wouldn't be reflected on that piece of paper in your hand. Um, but by looking at the account details through the student account center, you can see the actual minute up to the minute uh, amount due, any charges, any payments, things like that. And I do want to address students that have not yet registered. Uh, we have a number of uh, SOAR sessions, our orientation program uh, for new and transfer students that will happen in August. So if you haven't registered yet, you're not going to get a bill yet. Uh, you won't get a bill, but once you register, cashier's office will do a fee assessment, and then you have to go look in the student account center to see what you owe and, you know, the difference between, between what you owe and what your financial aid will cover. So if you have, if you were not involved in SOAR or you're not a continuing student, uh, you're not going to get a, a SOAR prior to now. You won't get a bill that looks like this. You will need to go to the Student Account Center, log in with your ID and password, um, and check your bill and, and be sure that you, if you haven't registered yet, your, your bill will be due on the first day of class. I think, too, we had a question about when will my scholarship be posted or athletic scholarship. Also, all, fun, all institutional aid is generally posted to the student account around 10 days before the first day of classes. It takes the cashier's office probably seven days to process all that aid and determine if there are refunds that need to be created. So refunds, the first, the very first refunds don't are not available until generally the Friday before classes start. So you'll see that financial aid post, but you won't get that refund per, for close to another 10 days. Ms. Tollison, can you go over the screenshot that we have here as far as the financial aid and the differences between a grant, scholarship, and a loan? Sure. Grants and scholarships are similar. Um, grants tend to be need-based, but grants and scholarships you do not have to repay. Okay, so those are kind of free money that we call free money. Um, those are forms of financial aid that are gift aid. Loans, on the other hand, loans are money they're lending you and you do have to repay it. If you're a first time student or, the, or this is the first time you've ever had to use a loan, uh, we, there is loan counseling on uh, studentaid.gov that you have to, to um, do to make sure you understand the, uh, the conditions of the, of the loan, the criteria, the repayment requirements, uh, what, what your options are if something should happen, like you lose your job, there are forbearances. There's a lot of information about loans that you'll want to learn, but, but the bottom line, loans you pay back, grants and scholarships generally you don't. Um, then there are, uh, we do have a small program called Federal Work Study, and that's a program where you actually have to work, you get a job, and you get a paycheck. And the work study doesn't show up as anticipated credit because if you never work, you're never gonna get that money. You're gonna get a paycheck if you work. So um, the only way you can use the work study to pay your bill is to uh, work directly with the cashier's office on that. But again, uh, things like federal Pell Grant, the UNC need-based grant, the lottery scholarship, those are, and the Dean scholarship, those are all grants and scholarships that you will not have to repay. Do any of the loans need a co-signer? Pardon? Do any of the loans need a co-signer? Uh, the federal student loans do not require a co-signer. If, um, if you approach a private bank, uh, you know, and, and secure what we call an alternative loan, you might be required to have a co-signer. But if you're getting, if you've done the FAFSA and you're getting federal student loans, they do not require a co-signer. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lucas, we got a question. Is there an interest charged on the payment plan with the cashier's office? Yeah, that, that's a great question because we talk a lot about student loans and we do know loans carry interest, but the payment plan is different and there is no interest on that. As I mentioned before, there is a $35 fee to use the payment plan uh, each term that you choose to use it. But the benefit to that is you pay the fee up front, but then it doesn't matter 
uh, after that, whether your charges increase or decrease, if you have extra payments or extra charges, and as I mentioned before, those remaining payments would be automatically updated, but there's no additional fees or interest for using it. Um, the payment plan is available by term. So in some instances, a student might use it for one semester, but not another. And that's okay, so that's up to you. It's available if you wanna use it. Um, that's a real advantage to this program too, because uh, there may be a semester where you need the help of the payment plan, but another semester where you don't, and you don't have to use it if you don't want to. So it is $35 uh, per term that you choose to use it, but no interest. So if I decline the loans for, let's say the fall semester, and I wanted to use those loans that I declined for the spring semester, I still have access to those loans? That is correct. The benefit to the student loans is even if you choose not to use them initially and change your mind, they will be available later. So uh, that's really a flexible um, kind of uh, thing to have in your arsenal to use to pay the bill. Um, you don't have to choose to do it right away. And in some cases, uh, like to t people think about the fact that really coming to college is really a four year journey. And there may be a semester or a year where you don't use student loans and that's a real benefit, but they're always gonna be there in case you need to use them. And as we mentioned before, there is no co-signer for the student loan. There's no credit check on the student. Um, that's one of the benefits of the loan in the first place is that there, a lot of students who are coming uh, to college may not have uh, a lot of uh, credit history. They may not have had a lot of jobs. They may be coming out of high school and don't have uh, a lot of money available. And unlike a loan that you might get for a car or a mortgage for a home where they're gonna look at your income and all that, the government says, if you're in school, we're gonna give you this money as a loan. It is a loan, there is interest on it, you do have to repay it, but it's nice to know that they are putting a lot of money out there for students to help them pay for school because they do recognize how important getting a college degree is in terms of uh, being able to get out there and start a career. I do want to mention a couple of things real quick, if I may. Um, it's really important for you to know that there is a lot of information on our website. Um, whoops, am I? Yeah, no, I'm talking. We have uh, all of our forms are out on our website. If you go to our website, John, can you bring our website yep. up? Can you share our website? Yep. Let There's me... a little section on the left-hand side and forms is really important. So if you did decline your loans, for example, and you decide you want to take the loans out after all, there's a loan change request form that you can use. These things are really important right now, particularly because our office is not open to the public right now. The university is still, pretty much closed. Uh, the building we are in remains locked during the day. Uh, our staff is working remotely. Uh, now we are full service. We've been answering the phones all throughout the pandemic. We've been answering our emails. Um, so you can see uh, the forms there on the left. Uh, there's a lot of good information on our website, but yeah, there's forms. So, was, and then you would go to the 2021 forms and they're all listed out there. And so under loan, loans, very first one is that federal direct loan change form. So that's the form that you would click on. You can print that out, complete it, and then you can use our document uploader. And back on our main page in that same column where it showed forms is um, upload documents. It gives you directions on how to upload those documents. Um, yeah, see right there, upload documents. So you can find the directions on how to do that in UNC Genie. They're very detailed directions to make it easy. Um, uploading your documents is the best way to get something to us right now. It is not too late to apply for financial aid. Might be a little late for it to pay your bill, but we'll work with you. Uh, you might need to set up a payment plan, but as soon as we can get your FAFSA in and determine your eligibility, we'll create an award for you and provide you with uh, whatever financial aid you are eligible for. So you can still do your FAFSA. You can turn things in on document uploader. You can send us an email. We generally respond to our emails within 24 hours. Since the bills went out today, it might, it might take us 48 hours this week, <laughs> but, but we really do check those emails quickly and respond to them as quickly as we can. We have our counselors on the phones uh, and we are answering as many phone calls as we can, uh, but you can't come into the office right now, but we are still full service, like I said, and our website is, is a tremendous resource. And if, you, if you're having trouble finding something, again, ask Minnie. She's down there in the bottom right-hand corner. 
and she's happy to answer your questions and find things on our website and answer questions for you. Thank you. Yes, Minnie is a huge help for our office. And as we always say, she never takes a break. And um, it's information that we monitor very closely. So we, we, we're keeping her up to date as we know more about the changes of anything as far as the university and or federal financial aid. She is a hard worker. Yeah. I have a quick question about the, um, about the transportation fees. Uh, what are the transportation fees for? So that, that's a great question. So as we mentioned earlier, the cost of attendance has uh, several components that are not actually billed to you on your bill from the cashier's office. And transportation um, is one of them. Well, what does that really mean? Well, for instance, even if you live on campus, you still have to arrive from wherever you live to the campus. You may want to go home for a break. You may want to go home for a weekend. So transportation is um, something that is going a, a cost a student will incur. Um, that's just one one example of how transportation as a part of the cost of attendance is is calculated. But another way that that impacts a student is the transportation fee that's part of your bill. So these are two different things, but both use the same word. Um, why is there a transportation fee on your bill? Well, one of the reasons is that there is a pretty extensive uh, shuttle service on campus that helps students get around. And that fee helps to maintain and acquire the, the buses to pay for the bus drivers and things like that. So sometimes, again, comparing our cost of attendance from financial aid to the pieces of your bill, there are some things that look similar or may look like they overlap, but they're really kind of different things. We had a great question come into the, the Facebook chat and it says that um what do you do if your bill shows out of state and you actually live in state the north carolina residency residency number is showing in, in the spartan link um okay so residency is handled by the admissions office if you have a residency issue and of course residency itself is determined by the state the residency determination service and you fill their questionnaire out it looks like you may have already done that. If you have a, a residency determination from the state and that's not being reflected at UNCG, you need to contact undergraduate admissions. And definitely share with them your residency control number, the RCN. That will help them look at your information and see if they should be updated or not on our side of the, of the fence. Earlier, Ms. Tollison, you mentioned work study. How do you how how are, how is a student eligible for work study at, at the University of North Carolina Greensboro? Okay, so work study, federal work study is a small program to start with. It is a federally funded program, and you apply for it with the financial aid form. There are a lot more students who are who meet the criteria than we have money to fund. So at this point in time, if you have not already been awarded federal work study, it's doubtful that you would be able to secure it for next year. You can email us and, and at our finaid at uncg.edu email and ask to be put on the waiting list for work study, but you can also contact the student employment office and look at the student employment jobs that are available on campus, because there are a lot more jobs on campus that are not federal work study than there are federal work study jobs. So um, not having work study doesn't mean you can't work on campus. We also got another question that said, if my daughter lives off campus and takes out the federal subsidized and unsubsidized loans to pay for the, I guess, off, off campus living, and then they get a scholarship check, does that affect the financial aid amount or refund? How does that affect the account? <laughs> Great question. Uh, I, I chuckle because a lot of the questions that we get in the financial aid world, the answer is it depends. It depends on a lot of factors that are difficult to um, talk about in a general question. Um, it, it doesn't have to affect anything. It could just be an additional payment to the student account. However, um, we did mention this cost of attendance, it keeps cropping up again. Um, that is the, the total amount of aid a student can have for the year. And should they be in a situation where they do have a lot of aid and they're at that limit, an additional scholarship could mean a reduction in another part of your, of your financial aid to keep you within that cost of attendance. Generally, what that would mean is for a student, 
would be getting a scholarship and having some of their student loan reduced to fit them under that, that federal limit. Um, but that doesn't happen all the time. So it's really hard to say for sure. But I think the fact that the answer to the most questions is it depends means if you do have that question specifically, you should contact our office, whether it's by email or calling us on the phone, uh, letting us look at your individual account to see uh, how would it affect your situation directly? Because the answer is never going to be the same for, for everybody. And we will always make a decision that is in the student's best interest. So if we do have to reduce something, it will always be loans first because they have to repay the loan and we'll let them keep those scholarships that they don't have to repay. Correct. For everyone that's just joining us uh, here tonight, um, I just kind of want to recap about what we're, we're talking about tonight. Um, we're joined by Deborah Tollison, our Director of Financial Aid, and our Associate Director, John Lucas. And our topic tonight is uh, Money Matters and how does financial aid um, and how does it affect your student bill here at the university? A lot of our continuing students have received their, financial, their uh, bill with the university and in the email uh, this afternoon. And we wanted to address about how financial aid and that bill affect each other and how things get paid or how do you know if you do owe a balance as we get closer to the start of the semester for fall. And um, just some general overview things are, and we can discuss those again, is that um, your financial aid that gets accepted in your UNC Genie account will automatically go and help pay your student bill. Uh, the two things that will happen, you'll actually have a balance due, and we can go over the quickly what the, how to um, pay the balance due, or you'll have a negative balance, which means you'll receive a refund check back from the university to pay for books, supplies, off-campus livings, things like that. John, can you go over one more time about the options for paying a balance with the university once the financial aid is applied? Right, so it's a question that we do get a lot, which is I have some financial aid, but it's not enough to cover my whole bill. I do owe some money. What do I do now? What are the possibilities that are open to me? Um, generally, for most people, um, there are really there are three options. One is paying the amount due out of pocket. If you have the ability to take money from an account and you can just pay the bill, that that is a possibility. Um, or if that's not an option for you, um, there is a parent plus loan. This is a federal loan for parents, much like the students get their own loan, a student loan. This is a loan the parents apply for. Um, that would be also go through our office and those funds would pay to the student account. So that's a way to handle the amount due. Or there's also a payment plan offered by the cashier's office. The benefit to the cashier's office payment plan is that it would take the amount due. And as long as you uh, elect the payment plan option uh, on or before July 16th, it would take that uh, amount due and split it into five equal payments. So for instance, if your amount due was $5,000, you can pay $5,000 all at one time in a lump sum. That's pretty hard. It would be hard for me. I know that. Um, or you can break it down into five payments, each of $1,000. And that makes it just a little bit easier to meet that obligation by not having to pay it all at one time. There is a $35 fee to use the payment plan, but there is no interest on it. So it's just a one-time fee. Once you've paid it, uh, you're in the plan. And that's really important. And even though the payments would be continue into the fall semester, um, you are considered to be current with your bill by being in the payment plan. So that, that's a really good option uh, for people to use as well. There are a few cases where someone will use both the plus loan and a payment plan. You actually can do both, but for the most part, people will choose one or the other. Thanks for clarifying that, John. Ms. Tollefson, how do I view this information for, for if I was a parent or a student and I wanted to know how much the cost was and how much financial aid, aid that I'm receiving? Uh, your best, the best option is for the student to log into the student account center. Um, there'll be a link when you get your, your bill, your email bill that came out today. There are links in there and there's a lot of good information that comes from the cashier's office. But if you want to actually view your most up-to-date information, you're going to want to log into the student account center in UNC Genie. Yeah, we have a new Oh, about the Student Account Center, there's a couple important things that a student can do when they're in the Student Account Center. So one, you can view your bill. What is my amount due? Another important thing, if you haven't done so already, is students can uh, list authorized users in the Student Account Center. Oftentimes it's a parent, but it could be anyone, any trusted person that you want. And that person would also get notified when, when the bill comes out. They would also be able to look 
and see what the amount is and make payments in the student account center for the bill. So that can be really helpful because then the student and someone else is getting the information. Another important thing about uh, the student account center is setting up a, a, a bank account, one for direct deposit. So anytime there's a refund, you would get a direct deposit rather than a check mail to a local address. But also if you set up a, an account to pay the bill, those can be stored in the student account center. So you don't have to always do it every time. It would remain there and you could select that, that method of payment in a future term to make the payments as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of great things you can do in there to set yourself up for success in terms of making sure you know what the amount due is, making sure you know when it's due, making sure that you uh, have a way to pay the bill or in the case of a refund, have it get to you right away. Because having that refund is how you will pay for your rent if you're living off campus. It's how you'll buy your books and things like that. So getting that money to you efficiently is really important part of the process. Thank you, clarifying that. We also have a good question from, uh, it says that um, here in Gifford County, we have the Say Yes. And a lot of our students and families are participating in the Say Yes scholarship. And they're wondering why it's not showing up on the bill just yet. Well, I can, I can tell you why it's not there just yet. Uh, there is a, um, uh, a lot of our students do get uh, some money from the Say Yes organization, and we do work pretty closely with them to make sure that uh, that can be as smooth as possible for our students. Uh, we, we are waiting for them to send us information about the students who are getting uh, this money. We do not yet have it, so we don't know who it is or, or how much. So we are a little bit at their mercy to wait for them to get it to us, but they will. Um, they will get it to us. Uh, we will provide them whatever information that we need to to make that happen and we'll get it posted to students uh, accounts as quickly as we can uh, unfortunately um it's a good example of what we would call an outside scholarship meaning it's not outside of our process it's not federal financial aid it's not aid from the state or from uncg directly so we are uh, unfortunately have to wait for them to get it to us but um they do uh like i said before they do award a lot of students on campus uh, every year. So um, we work with them as closely as we can to make sure that the process is as smooth as it can be for our students. We've got about 15 minutes left before seven o'clock. And um, given the amount of, of, of expertise that both of you have, if you had to give, and I'll start with you, Ms. Tollison, if you had to give students and parents five top things or best advice that you would give a student and parent in attending a university as far as financial aid and the bill, what would those top five things be? Don't forget to file your FAFSA every year. Okay. Uh, you have to do the FAFSA every year. It's available in October of each year for the next academic year. So, you know, we do often see people that file it early the first year and then late every time after that. Uh, there is limitations on the on particularly state and institutional aid and so the earlier you can get that fafsa filed each year the better once you file a fafsa keep in touch with the school at uncg uh everything is just everything you'd want to know about your financial aid application is in unc genie so you can check genie for for additional requirements that we need get those requirements to us quickly um, or if everything's there, we'll tell you that. Use our uploader. If you're going to submit documents, use the uploader. It, it is the most secure, safest, sure way to get things to us quickly and we can process them quickly. Uh, I think that's about four things. Uh, well, I'll jump in and, and let okay. you think. Which is great advice. All of those are great advice. Exactly. I think that one important thing is that uh, dealing with uh, students or parents over the years, sometimes there's a disconnect between those two entities where a student will say, I don't know what happened, my, my mom handles that. Or a parent will say, uh, I let the student handle that, but they didn't, they didn't follow through on it. Um, acting independently without the other side of that coin is difficult because uh, the other side doesn't know what they're doing. So, Students, if you do want your parents to help you through this process, make sure you are including them um, by adding them as a user in the student account center. Make sure you are sending them emails that you get from our office that's maybe asking you to do something or explaining something if you're not sure what it is. Ask your parents for help. Parents, if you're seeing these things, don't just do them for your student. Um, and so your student does not know um, that it's being done because 
when they call us to ask a question and we'll say, did you do this or has that happened? And they say, I don't know. It's hard for us to help them. So be a team, help each other out because it really can be a lot of information, especially for a new student between registering for courses, coming to doing SOAR, having financial aid, learning about a bill. That's a lot of information. So, you know, do it together as a team. Uh, don't act solo because then it's difficult for the other person to help. So that's a really important thing. The other thing I mentioned earlier, which I think is really critically important is that while we do award student loans and we do award the maximum allowed by the government for your grade level, it doesn't mean that you have to take all that money. If you decline your student loan and change your mind later, you can still get it. If you borrow a smaller amount than your maximum and find out later that you, that you want to use more, you still can. You're not making a decision now that is set in stone. So if you think right now, I don't need to borrow the money. What if I do need it? I should just take it all. Well, don't do that. Decline the money. If you do need student loans later, you can still get them. So it's okay for you to um, try to do as little as you can, because our advice is always to borrow as little as you need. Um, paying the bill for one semester or one year is one thing, but you'll be in school for four years. So it's important to think about how that student loan money can add up from, from year to year. It is there to assist you. It's there to help you. It's there if you need it. Uh, but it's important to not borrow at all just because it's what's offered to you. Uh, you may not need it from one semester or another. Don't use it. My advice would be that um, early bird gets the worm. Mm -hmm. um, that's so true in everything that you're going to do here at the university. The sooner you do something, the earlier you do something that lowers the risk, the anything that, that needs to be communicated between them. Also know that um, our office, especially, I'll only speak of our office, is, is we have a full office, a full team that is working eight hours a day to answer questions. So don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, don't ever assume anything because we have to play by these very strict deadlines that are some of our, our own deadlines, some are across the university. And then once we hit these deadlines, it's really hard to say, I didn't know or I didn't understand once that deadline is passed, we, we may not be able to help you past that point. So if you have any questions or concerns, definitely reach out. That is true in the staff of UNCG. It'll also be true in your faculty in UNCG. If you're having trouble in your classes or anything like that, reach out to the professor. This is what they get paid to do. And the more you let people know your concerns and questions, the more people can help you with those. Um, I really wanna thank our panel tonight. Um, I appreciate your wisdom and uh, what you're doing to help our families across the university. Um, just know that we are available via email and phone call. Many is available 24 hours a day on our website and uh, uploading your documents. Ms. Thompson is absolutely correct. That lowers the risk of us losing a document or not knowing what the document is for or for whom. So that goes into your account directly. This is our busiest time of the year, so you're going to have to expect some delays in every communication that you're going to uh, do across campus. Um, understand, too, that once the bill is paid and the financial aid is applied, you don't need us that much longer, and then we have plenty of time to answer questions. The bill is also that you're seeing is off for one semester, so assuming that the spring semester is going to be the same amount that you're going to owe, so don't let that be a surprise to you in January. Uh, is there anything else you guys would like to offer before we sign off for the night? Uh, I, I think for me, it's kind of saying about early bird gets the worm. Um, we can handle and get your aid awarded well ahead of the start of, of the school year. Um, we can have everything in place well in advance. So that way, when the semester starts, all you have to worry about is going to class. All you have to worry about is getting involved in activities. You don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. And we have the ability to do that well ahead of time. So it's important to pay attention to uh, the timelines, pay attention to our messages, because a lot of students, um, especially continuing students, they can be awarded months in advance and, and, and put us on autopilot. And that's really great. You don't have, we don't want you to worry about us. We don't want you to worry about your bill. We want you to worry about going to class. We want you to worry about having fun. We want you to worry about becoming involved in UNCG because that, that's, where, that's where it's at right there. Um, like Chris said, we, we are here uh, every day. We are answering questions. We are processing forms. We are doing everything we can to make this happen for you as quickly as possible, as smoothly as possible. Um, but if we do reach out to you and ask you a question, if we do ask you for a form, if we do have a question we need you to clarify, you know, please get back to us as quickly as you can so we can continue to, to move that ball uh, down the field, so to speak, and get your stuff done. Because that's really uh, 
what we are striving for is to have all of your stuff done well ahead of time. And we can do that. Once again, when is the bill for fall due? So two important dates to think about, and it's important to, to, to hear this, the, the distinction. The payment due date listed on your bill is July 30th. The actual payment deadline to pay is the first day of, of, of class, August 18th. So um, if you can aim to have everything covered by the 30th, it gets gets to what I was just saying about having everything in place and not have to worry about any of these details when you're moving into your residence hall or starting classes and all that. But the actual payment deadline, the point at which if you don't pay, your courses will be canceled is the first day of class, August 18th. Yeah, you can worry about the first day of class and trying to find a place to park. <laughs> that be your stress not paying your bill Correct. on the day that it's due. We do have one more question that came in here. We do have a little bit of time. It says, how do we find the other scholarships that were sent in the to the school in the UNCG app? And I'm not sure how to answer that one. Not sure what that means. Well, I think if you're talking about a scholarship that maybe that you got from your high school or from a local civic group that was sent to us, um, how that works is we do, uh, put that into the financial aid system as an outside resource. And the check is then sent to the cashier's office to be processed as a payment on your account. And you will see that payment on your account in the student account center in the account details. So if you had, for instance, say a Kiwanis Club scholarship, um, it would say Kiwanis Club scholarship and the amount of that fall payment. So if we had a check for $1,000, 500 for fall, that's what you will see, even though we got a check for $1,000, uh, half of that was applied to the fall. The other half is held for the spring semester. And when you get your spring bill, you will see that as, as a credit or a payment for the spring, that $500. So it would be listed in the account details. Um, so that's one way you can, you can check. It's also going to be um, on our side of the fence uh, as a scholarship, outside scholarship posted uh, that way. But it's really when it hits the student account as a payment, that's really what you want to see because that means that we process it in our office and then we send it to the cashier's office and they've processed it. And now it's a payment on your account and that's, that's gonna lower your amount too. Another question we got earlier uh, that we addressed was, um, Ms. Thompson was talking about the health insurance and that some students are charged health insurance even though they may have the health insurance through themselves or through their parents. How do they, what department do they look at about waiving that information? Okay, to waive the student health insurance, they need to go to the Student Health Center's website and it's very prominent on there how to waive the, the uh, student blue insurance. You have to list your insurance policy. You, get, you need to know your policy number. You, know, you need your, ID, your insurance card. All the information you need is gonna be on your insurance card. It does take five to 10 days for that waiver process to happen and for the credit to be put back on the student account. Now, even if you waive the student health insurance, there is still a health center fee because students can still use the on-campus uh, health clinic. So if they get a cold, they get the flu, they, you know, so they're not feeling well, they can go over to the health center and as part of that health center fee, uh, there's a small fee on there that they pay in addition to the health insurance premium. But the premium can be waived by going to the Student Health Services website. I'm going to share my screen here and show you the website just so people can see uh, what we're talking about. This is the um, student health website at UNCG under student insurance. And if, if I scroll down here, you will see two options to either uh, enroll in a health student uh, health plan if you were to need it, or if you have your own health insurance already, you would select the wave out of this and select this link and uh, fill in the information. And as uh, we just said, um, once it's confirmed that you have your own health insurance, uh, student health will then contact the cashier's office and the health insurance charge will, will be removed. It is really important though, that you remember to do this because looking at the top here, there is a deadline to verify your health insurance. That is September 10th. If you have health in, your own health insurance and you don't waive out of this coverage, it will be permanent for the whole semester. It cannot be removed after that fact. The health insurance is is uh, is is a is pricey. Health insurance is expensive, and we don't want you to have to pay twice for something that you already have. So definitely waive out of it. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't have any health insurance, enrolling in it will be really important. It is a requirement, state requirement to have health insurance, so it is required for you to have it. Um, 
And uh, it is also, as Tali said, uh, the Student Health Center, separately from having insurance or who was your insurance provider, they do offer services that are covered under your um, health center fees that you pay as part of the mandatory fees. Before we leave, I do want to thank Matthew Reese. He's one of our counselors who has uh, been answering questions on Facebook. And Deborah Slade, who's an assistant director, who's been managing this whole uh, uh, live Facebook feed. Thanks, couldn't do it without them, that's for sure. Well, I just wanted to thank everybody. Chris, you did a great job as host. Tolly, John, thank you. Matthew, you've been great on the comments on the Facebook post. And I just wanted to remind everybody, yeah, <laughs> that um, all the most of the information that we've discussed here tonight can be found um, on one of the pages on our website. Matthew's going to put that in the comment section for you. But um, John, if you can share that. Um, oh, wait a second. Like, yeah, just share that on the screen so they can see what that looks like. Um, newly created page, just some information to help you get started for this semester. So again, we thank you for joining us and I'm gonna turn it back over to our host to um, lead us out. Here's the uh, page with the information that will at least get you in the right direction, at least answer some quick questions. Um, as we said before, any page you go to of ours is gonna have many down at the bottom to help guide you as well. If you have some quick questions, um, if you want to know too about how to budget and pay for it, there's a little bit of a, a graphic down there. If you'll scroll down just a little bit more, John. I'm sorry. Here we go. For all our visual learners, um, we were talking earlier, and uh, Tali also suggested that one thing you're going to have to learn in school is you're going to learn how to budget, and you're going to have to learn what what is due and how much you have to pay it and ways that you're going to have to figure out how to pay it. That is part of the learning experience of attending a university. So that's, I really do. Yeah. And Chris, that's so important, especially this fall. We have a number of students who are considering and opting to, to live off campus that might've normally lived on campus. And I, you know, I, I go back to, you just need to do one of those old fashioned budgets. You put, make a column on the left of a sheet of paper that's all the expenses that you have and a column on the right side that are all your resources. If the left side adds up to more than the right side, you gotta figure out another way to get some more things on the right side. It might be a part-time job. Uh, it might be help from family members. It might be uh, your own personal savings as a student. So. Uh, budgets, like you said, are, are really critical if you're living off campus. Okay, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, if you do have any additional questions or information you would like to know more about, you can always email the office or give us a call. You can always ask Minnie first, which would be my first step to see how she answers the questions. And if you need further clarification, then definitely reach out to us. As I said before, this is our busiest time of the year, so do expect delays on information getting back to you, but do know that we are here and we have been here answering questions all summer. And we wanna thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, good night. Thank you, bye-bye.